Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, that every day, Father, of our lives is a journey with you, Father. And for that journey, God, we say thank you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we made it back into the house one more time, Father. And for that, we say thank you, Jesus. Father, we ask today, Father God, that you would have your way with each and every one on today, Lord God. God, we thank you, Father God, that your spirit is already here, Father, because we came with you, God. And for that, we say thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being a keeper of our minds and our souls, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that last week wasn't our last week, Father God. But God, you have given us another chance, Lord God. Father God, so we know that there is purpose, Lord God. And there's divine help, Father God, that we can ask from you, Father God. So God, on today, Father God, we thank you for everyone, Father God, that's in the sanctuary this morning, Lord God. God, we pray, Father God, for everyone, Father God, that is on their way, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're dispatching your angels even now, Father God, that they will make it safely here, Father God. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for what our eyes will see, God, and what our ears will hear on today, Lord God. We ask on today, Father God, that you would anoint our ears to hear what only you would speak, Father God. Father, we ask you to anoint our hearts, Lord God. If there's anything in it, Father God, that shall not flow, Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would create a clean heart in us, Father God. And Father, that you would renew a right spirit in us, Lord God. Father, have your way in this place today, Lord God. Father, we came with great expectations on today, Lord God. Oh God, we expect to see miracles, Father God. We expect to see signs and wonders on today, Lord God, because of who you are, Lord God, the great and mighty God, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for being Jehovah Rapha, God the God that healeth thee. We thank you, Father, for being Jehovah Nisi, God, our banner and our victory, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being Jehovah El Young, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being Jehovah Sick and New, Lord God, our God of our righteousness, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for being the Holy One of Israel, Lord God. So, God, we can turn to you, Father God, if there's anything that we in need of, Father God, because your word says that we are to cast all our cares every care, every anxiety, Lord God, upon you, Father, because you care for us, Lord God. Oh, God, on today, Father God, depression has no will in this house today, Lord God. Anxiety, Lord God, cannot stay in today, Lord God. And God, even our pains, Lord God, that is racking our bodies, Lord God, we came today expecting a healing on today, Lord God. So, God, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, God. We even pray today, God, that you will protect us, Lord God, as we worship you, Lord God. Protect our building, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we ask you to cover, God, the front door, the side doors, Lord God. Even cover in here, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for building a fence up around us, Lord God. Oh, God, that the enemy may throw dots, but they will not hit us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that any battles that we succumb to, Lord God, you said that you've already won the battle, Lord God, because the battle does not belong to us, Father. It belongs to you, Father God. So, Father, have your way today in this place, God. We want to hear from you, Father. We need a word, God. Someone needs a word on today, God, that will change their situation that will change their outlook on life, Lord God. We know, Father God, that there is a word from up on high, Father. We ask that you would anoint the speaker, Lord God, of the hour, Father God. Oh God, touch them, God, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord God, that they will come forth, Lord God, with power and clarity, Lord God, that we will even understand what you are saying to the church on today, Lord God. We thank you in advance, Lord God, and we would ask right now, Father, that you would cover our children, Lord God, as they go off, Lord God, to learn about you, Father God. We ask right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you go in Kid City, God, and that you go in no bounds, Lord God, and God, that their deliverance will take place even in there, God, as we're being delivered out here, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. 
We thank you for covering our children, God. We thank you, Lord God, for what shall happen on today, God. We will give you all the glory, God, and all the honor, God, because it's due you, Father God. So, Father, let your power and your anointing, God, flow fresh in here today, God. Flow, Lord God, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord God, that when we leave this place, God, we will never be the same, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for your transforming power, God, because you are a powerful God. God, you can do the impossible, Lord God. God, you can do anything, God, and we thank you for that, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for even sending your son to down the cross for our sins, Lord God. And if there's anyone, Father, that shall enter this building on today, God, we thank you for salvation on today, God. We thank you through a witness. We thank you through a word. We thank you through encouragement, Lord God, that somebody will be saved, Lord God, because of who you are, Father God. And Father, we'll give you the glory, God. Oh God, you said all the angels in heaven will be rejoicing, God, and will be rejoicing here, Father God, for a soul, Lord God, that shall be on save today, God. And even those, Father God, that may be listening on YouTube, God, we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that something is said today, the message that they listen to today, Lord God, that they will be delivered, that they will be set free, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing power, Lord God. So God, as we begin our worship service on today, our worship experience, Lord God, we want to worship and we want to feel your presence in this place today, Lord God. Some may have come in with a heavy burden on today, God. But God, on today, Father, every chain shall be broken in Jesus' name, Father God. Because, Father, you are the repairer of the breach, God. You repair, Father God. Oh, God, we thank you for planting today on great soil, God, on good soil on today, God, that every word that is delivered, every encouragement that is delivered, every prayer that is spoken on today, Lord God, that it will fall on good soil today, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that the enemy would not come in and snatch it up, God. Oh, God, but we thank you today, God, that every word shall go forth as you have intended to go forth, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we thank you for anointing the praise and worship team, God, that they will sing the songs of Zion on today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for anointing the musicians today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for anointing every person that is serving today, God, whether in the foyer area or in the sanctuary, God. Anoint us afresh, Lord God. Let us hear what you want us to hear, God, because someone may be standing next to us, God that needs a touch from you, Lord God. Let us be in tune to the spirit on today, Lord God. And God, let us know that God, this experience is not about us, that it's about you, Lord God. That your glory will go forth like never before, God. We thank you, Lord God, and there's some God that may be home that can't make it into the sanctuary today, Lord God, because they're still dealing with some types of ailments, some type of pain, God. I, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, we know who you are. We thank you for sending your healing power, God. Just like you said, we can speak the word and it will go where it needs to go, God. So we're speaking healing today, God, to someone that may be in the hospital, in the nursing home, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Even those that are out on the street corner, God. Oh, God, that don't know you. They don't know what's going on, God. Send your word to every corner, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And God, protect those that are on the street corners, preaching your word, Father God. Protect all the missionaries, God, that's in the vineyard, God, preaching your word, God. Protect every pastor, every leader that is preaching your word, Father God. We thank you, God. Your word says no weapon that is formed, God, against us, God should be able to prosper, God. And even on today, God, we thank you. We thank you for your power. We give you praise, honor, and glory, God. We thank you for your power, God. No other name, Father, that you said that men shall be saved. But in the name of Jesus, God, you said that every knee 
will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Jesus that you are Lord of Lords God so God keep us alert oh God keep us focused and not distracted in this season God because many are coming and God keep us healed delivered and set free that we may be able to do the same for our brothers and sisters that we will be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our brothers and sisters God so we thank you in advance God that we are the redeemed of the Lord and let the redeemed of the Lord say so and Jesus precious and holy name I do pray and let the church say amen, amen. hallelujah amen amen good morning city good morning Hallelujah. We come to give God worship on this morning. Hallelujah.
sing more than anything. More than anything. I'll bless you. I'll praise 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 you. Sing more than anything. 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 More than
responsive.
going back your response is my response. what's the highest praise hallelujah My response is hallelujah. You're my, you're my, you're my redeemer. Hallelujah. What will your response be? My response is, my response is hallelujah. You're my redeemer. a scripture that I want to read this morning. It is coming from Psalm 25 verse 1. Psalm 25 1. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me praise God how many of you know that the Lord prevails how many of you know that he's sovereign that he is God enough and he's watching over you today but he goes on to say let yea let none that wait on thee be ashamed let them be ashamed which transgress without cause show me thy ways O Lord and teach me thy paths. I believe that the Lord is deepening our walk with him right now. He's fortifying some things right now. If you do me a favor, while you're standing, just lift your hands. Have them open unto the Lord right now for him to do just what he said in, for, and through you. I believe that Lord wants to do some things in us right now and there's somebody that came in that needs a filling, that needs a replenishing, that needs a restoring. There's somebody that needs God to work on some things so he's working for you. Oh my God, he is working on your behalf. He's working some things out to your good and to your benefit. And then there are those that God is working through. He wants to use you in such a mighty way, in a new way perhaps. You recognize that even as we come closer to the end of this year, that this year was much about you being prepared for the next. The next season, the next place, the next direction, the next opportunity, the next stage. My God, the next platform the next business, the next relationship, the next fight. Oh, come on now. The next victory. God's been preparing you. If you believe that, would you do me a favor? Now put your hands together and bless the Lord all over this room. Come on with your voice. Also lifting up the name of the Lord in this place. He is good. Ah, he is good. Look at somebody and say, he's good. I want you to know he's good. I want you to know he's good. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 I'm so, so grateful for what God has done. Amen. Listen, we're in a season where we are reminded to give thanks for great many things. Amen. This week is recognized as Thanksgiving week, and even at the house of the Lord, we, we, we don't necessarily emphasize one week above the next, but somehow particularly this season has us to really extend and show our appreciation and, and even to welcome and, and, and love on others in part, go the extra mile. Amen. If at best, it's it's nothing wrong with doing that. Amen. And and we must be 
thoughtful, amen, that everyone isn't where we are, though they could be. In, in respect to God can move some mountains, change some things, amen. He can unburden some hearts, amen. I believe that, amen. Your prayers, and some of you have been praying a while now about certain matters, but your prayers, I want you, amen, to be reminded of this, that your prayers are not in vain. Amen. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord for a quick moment. Amen. As I draw your attention to just a few things. Amen. On this, uh, on today. Amen. Uh, some of which will be shared on email and text messages throughout the week. But we want you to be very versed in what's happening. people traveling right now and with that being said I pray safe travels to all that are already on their way and those of you that are going um, uh, to be on your way to be with loved ones and such amen I, I certainly pray God's grace upon your journey amen um, a quick note or two amen um, next weekend uh, that's the fourth weekend of November we were scheduled to have a family and friends out in at uh, the YMCA at Camp Christina, which is really right across <laughs> the street here um, that was scheduled. However, um, and I know they placed it on screen for you, but um, there is a change to that. We're going to have to postpone that date. Um, um, uh, so please, you can remove it now. Um, take it out of your agenda, your schedule. We'll get a new date for you. We have to take into consideration um, the personnel that is required to be here to make that a successful event. Amen. And several families are traveling and while we were so eager in part, amen, to get going with it, we wanted to ensure that we have the best of times. Amen. And that we had the support also to our staff and, and such. And even in honor of the fact that for so many, they're just getting back to so they can get back to. <laughs> um, we want to give them the time, amen, to do that. So a new day will be um, set uh, real soon, if not this week, to share with you. But as far as next week goes, we're changing the agenda concerning that. We'll still have service here um, at 10 a.m. And then we'll release you to you and your family. Amen. All right. Uh, those of you know in part, we've just been... I mean, we're, we're so grateful to um, to be here at the school, and the school, and the, the, the opportunity here in Riverview particularly has afforded us the opportunity to meet new families and, and, and in turn welcome so many to uh, this church. Um, and there are some new uh, individuals that will be coming along and being um, informed as to the, the beliefs, the, the vision, of our church um, and so on December 9th amen on zoom at about 11 a.m. I'm sorry 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. there will be a new members orientation more information will go out on that pastor Saida and her team amen will share concerning that amen and last but not least amen if you're not already connected and in fact I'll even go further to say this is the time to do so um, but we want you to be connected to our way of con um, connecting with you. So on screen, you can see um, the ways in which you can connect. Um, several of you are already connected to social media in terms of the coordination, um, the group that is there. But you can also receive updates um, more promptly, in fact, via text message, just by texting at Core Squad uh, to 81010. Um, as simple as that, you'll get in the group and in the know on what's happening week to week. Amen? Amen. Now, if nothing, um, you know, it is, it, it's, it, you feel kind of some kind of way when you don't get the update when you need to. Amen. And I'd hate to think we switch out and change stuff up and people start showing up where they shouldn't be. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we done moved on to, to the next and you come here on Sunday morning and don't know we're in a whole different space. Praise God, and 
you don't think the church raptured? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we want you to be in the know concerning what's happening. Amen. Um, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting right now. I'm being specific. Right now. When service is over, my fast is over. <laughs> my fast started when I got here. I'm saying all of that um, just so you know I know we are blessed with a number of gifts and in this house there are some talented people some great cooks and all I am one to do drive-bys I don't know but everybody else is too proud to beg <laughs> I'm not begging y'all anything I'm just letting you know I will do a drive-by and go right up in your kitchen and select exactly what I want, go back to my house and serve myself. No, I'm just saying all of that to say, amen. While you're having a wonderful time with you and yours, remember it's not just about the food and the, the meals and time apart, but it's also the time you share, amen, with one another. So be good and God about it, amen. Amen. Listen, I want to get to the word of the Lord, but before I get there, I do also understand there's another opportunity or another way in which we can worship, and that is through giving. Amen. And so we want to invite you to this opportunity. How you can partake in such is on screen for you. In a moment, we'll have baskets available where you can place an offering, a seed there, or you can use Zell, or not Zell, but Cash App rather, and Givelify. Those are means by which you can also give. I want to say thank you, even as we close this year out, I want to say thank you for your support throughout the year. Amen. It has been um, a blessing to this house and to beyond this house to a great many others. Amen. I'll have a report come the next year, January, concerning just how well we've done and even more what we're aimed at doing in 2024, 2025. Amen. Amen. I believe God is preparing us, amen, for what is to come. Somebody shout greater is on the way. Amen. Amen. I do believe that and I do honor that. Amen. Greater is on the way. Amen. Now, if you are prepared to sow, can I have you to stand with us? Amen. Some are going to do so again via Cash App, give the fire, other means. We want to make it easy and convenient. There is a kiosk, um, a portable mobile kiosk here available. If you'd like to swipe, we're living in this technological era. We've been here a long time now, amen. And so some might choose that mean you are welcome to come and do so at any time, amen. Sister Minister Tanaisa is here. She can assist you with that, amen. Come from wherever you are. This will be a great time. We'll pray after the seed's been collected. Is that good? Amen. All right. over that and together we touch and agree 
Father, Lord, I thank you right now for the seeds that have been sown. I thank you, Lord, for what it will do in your kingdom and how it will further your ministry work. May it be a blessing, O oh God, to the house and faith and beyond. May those that have sown, O oh God, and sown even more in faith be rewarded for their faith. Thank you right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, do me a favor. Find somebody and give them a big hug, a warm welcome, a handshake. Amen. Praise God. Make somebody welcome to our guest this morning. We say welcome for a second time back with us. God bless you all. Glad you're here. Pray your time will be well spent. You'll have a great time in the house of the Lord. Our children are already off for their own activities. Our young people the same. God bless you. Amen. It's a amen. It's a good thing that you came in. We value your time. We thank God for you. We really do. We really do. Yes. God bless you. Again, to our guests, we say welcome, family, welcome. Might as well go to work now. Amen. Walk by faith. I love that. I love that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Join me if you would. Amen. Join me if you could. And if you would, get your Bible, your tablet, your phone, whatever it is, in part. Amen. You brought it with you. That helps you get to the word of the Lord. Join me in the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm 100. Focusing on verse 5 in particular. Psalm 100 verse 5 and then we will go to Psalm 23 verse 6 Psalm 105 and then 23 verse 6 Amen give you some time Amen to get there Amen I know the iPhones got there quick It's all right. Amen. Amen. Want band with you, Sam? All right, we got it. Praise God. Amen. All right. Amen. Somebody asked me the, the other day, amen, I won't say who, they asked me, um, you love, no, they said first, you love technology. Yeah, and you're kind of techie and all of that. I said, yeah. What do you think about something okay let's put it this way they asked me something other than apple i was like i don't know nothing other than apple i am so biased praise the lord all i know is that jesus saves and so does apple that's all i know <laughs> second come is for the android folks anyway moving on um <laughs> jesus i don't cut the church in half <laughs> amen <laughs> amen all right psalm 100 verse 5 before you shut down on me <laughs> for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I'll say it again. In fact, let's say it together with boldness and authority. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I think it's worth saying a third time, don't you? Let's shout this one out. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations now jump with me to psalm 23 verse 6 if you would 
Amen. Psalm 23, 6. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all. Come on now. You got to catch this. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father, Lord, anoint this vessel, God, so we may minister your word to the hearer and the receiver of such. Pray, Holy Spirit, that somebody be saved, touched, and delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. While you're able, would you do me a favor? Once again, turn to somebody and tell them, tell them he's good to the last drop. He's good to the last drop. If you believe that, would you just put your hands together? Uh, he's that good. He's that good. You see, nothing can replace the sound of a worshiper. Nothing can replace the sound of the redeemed. Nothing can replace the sound of the deliberated, the victorious. Nothing can substitute the, the, oh come on, nothing can fulfill, nothing can repel. Oh God, when God has done a work in you and through you and for you, praise God, there is a sound that goes up into the heavens that rejoices, that acknowledges his goodness and his mercy and is grateful. Hey, let the redeemer of the Lord bless his name. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Open up your mouth one more time, if you would, and fill your mouth with words of worship and a sound of praise in this atmosphere. To God be the glory. Hey, God, to God be the glory. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated if you can. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want to, amen, uh, treat you to, teach you, preach you to, praise God, whatever way it comes out. Amen. I want to get in the word of the Lord. I believe God has, amen, a reminder for us all. Amen. Um, and I'm going to try to give you what, how the God, Lord gave it to me, but I'm going to be intentional about conveying to you um, these principles because as we conclude this year, and I know we've got a few more weeks and best um, before we really come to the end of another year, amen, and for so many, uh, the perception of another season, amen, I believe God is trying to remind us and inform us of a number of things, amen, and the word that God gave me or, told, um, or the thought or the topic is the goodness of God, the goodness of God. How many of you know he's a good God? Someone would once say it this way, he's been better to me than I have been. Anybody a witness? You can never outdo the goodness of God. The Lord, um, just short of even coming up here, he, he reminded me this. I didn't get it into my notes, but he reminded me in my spirit, amen, while I was preparing. He said, that which we fail to acknowledge we will inevitably, inevitably undermine that which we fail to acknowledge. Make a note of this. We will inevitably undermine or even underestimate. Hence why we need talk about every now and then as believers, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the sovereignness of God, the power of God. And so this morning, we opened up with Psalm 100, verse 5, where in part the text says, David ascribes and, uh, and attributes uh, a great number of things to God, but he says in this, for the Lord is good. I believe, I believe that as David spoke these words, he did not just speak it in a matter of observance or as that of a spectator, but he participated, he experienced the goodness of God for himself. That's so much so when he says the Lord is good, he's speaking to it as an adjective and a noun. 
Hey, praise God. He's describing that God is good, but he's ultimately saying at best he is good. And if you see anything good, it is God. All right, all right, watch this. All right, we're, we're going to get somewhere. Don't worry, we're going to get somewhere. He goes on and says his mercy is everlasting and his truth all about him endures to all generations. Hence, he's, watch this, he was good then, he is good now, and he'll be good tomorrow. Oh, y'all, watch this. I'll say it again. He was good then. He is good now, and he'll be just that good tomorrow. Praise God. There are a number of things we have partake or partook in life that was good then, not so good now, and we question about whether it would be good tomorrow. But God is good then, never changing. Good now, always the same, and good tomorrow, reliable. You can trust that he will be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. We oftentimes, even as we talk about the goodness of God, we oftentimes speak of him and honor him through our actions and through our, our, our interactions as well. We sing songs about the goodness of God. We, we rejoice over his goodness. We testify about his goodness. We celebrate his goodness, and we need to continue to acknowledge, as, especially as believers, the goodness of God, because the world in which we live is without hope. Ah, praise God. And we need present Christ, uh, watch this, uh, in, the, in the nature, in the, in, in, in the way in which he is, and not defame or, uh, um, or not ignore or, 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 or not misrepresent him, let me put it in that way, uh, who he is to the world. Because it is the goodness of God that is most attractive. Because he is so good. Many have come to know him. Now, we're going to get really into how God's goodness is displayed from day to day. But before we get there, I want you to know again that he was good then, now, and tomorrow. Since even the Garden of Eden, God has been good. And since the Garden of Eden, Satan has been trying to get people, more importantly, us as believers to question the goodness of God. Have you ever been in a situation that has had you to question the goodness of God? Not, this this, this not, does not question your salvation. I'm not, I'm not questioning your aptitude, your intellect, your knowledge about God. But there are times circumstances can cause you to question the goodness of God. It is the enemy's plight and plot to have us question the goodness of God. Watch this. To only bring about doubt and confusion about God's, what, about what? But God's generosity and about his kindness. When in part we are going through and we will all go through something at some point in our lives, praise God, the enemy will try to seep in and seed in, uh, praise God, doubt and disbelief uh, and even to have you question the word of God, uh, praise God. But I got to give you some scriptures in a minute, praise God, that's going to remind you about the commitment God has, watch this, uh, to his word. Y'all have to watch this. To his word. And I'm saying this because uh, there are times you don't feel, you will feel like he's not committed to you. Praise God. But it is not you. It is the word. And if you have the word in you, he's committed to you by proxy of the word in you. You got to catch this. He's committed to the word in you. And by the word being in you, he's then inevitably connected to you. But it's the word in you that he's committed to. My God, watch this. So when you get the word in you, it is going to seed in you and bring up a righteousness that is a benefit. Fact, uh, a benefactor or a, ben uh, a byproduct, yes, under the word, a byproduct of the word. The word is a seed, and out of that seed comes a fruit. God is committed to his word. I never leave you. 
That's his word. Nor forsake you. Now, there are times you will go through. I didn't say you wouldn't. Hmm. But I never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, there are times you will come up short and, and you'll feel all alone, but I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, there are times you won't have the attorney and the advocate and you won't have, it seem like you'll have more up uh, against you, but I'll never leave you nor forsake you. All right, let's move on. We need help again to remove the doubt and to even clear up the confusion on what God looks like. So hence the necessity of this word. Go with me to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. It is actually one of our key scriptures. Psalm 119 verse 68. Amen. A conversation is being had here and I extract these particular words because it's the foundation for this text. This is what the author says. He says, you are good. He's speaking of God. You are good and you do only good. Make a note of that. Watch this. Uh, he is good. Somebody say it with me. He is good and he does only good. All right, y'all. We got we to let that marinate for a moment. He is good and he does only good. God is good, catch this, in character and action. Make a note. He is good in both character and action. He goes, he starts by saying, you are good. That's his character. And you do only good. That's his action. Y'all catch this? So when we say that God is good, we are saying that everything about him is good. Oh, y'all watch this. He, he, his love is good. His sovereignty is good. His power is good. His, watch this, wrath is good. Mm -hmm. His justice is good. His grace is good. His mercy is good. His discipline is good. His decisions are good. What he does is good. And what, watch this, and what he does not do is also good. Oh, oh God. We have a propensity and a potential oftentimes to believe that only what he does is good. But how about what he chooses not to do? Some of my blessings have literally been God not answering according to my request. How many times have we asked for God of a thing and we know we weren't ready for it? We know we couldn't handle it. We know it wasn't in his divine will, but we wanted it anyway. Praise God. I can think about the children of Israel wanting a king and in that of Saul. And that was not God's choice for them. But because he, they petitioned him, he gave it to them. My point is this. Don't perceive that God's goodness is enshrined in a yes. Ah, praise God. He's not provoked to operate according to your desires. Now, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, make a note of this because this is going to help us. Make a note of this. Uh, uh, when, there are five things I want you to walk away with knowing about God's goodness. The first is this. God's goodness, watch this, make a note, is constant. God's goodness, say it with me, God's goodness is constant. Whew. His goodwill, in other words, does not waver. You know, the truth of the told is this, man, and I'm man, and you're man, man, goodness, thank you Holy Spirit, is oftentimes conditional. And by reason of it being conditional, it's, it's, it's almost reactional, meaning in part, if you do good by me, then I oftentimes do good by you. Let's be real. Let's be real. Praise God. Seldom do we ever put ourselves in a place 
of being victimized or better yet being the target or uh, praise God of someone's hatred or dislike uh, but, uh, uh, and, and it's very difficult to do good to others when they're not doing good to you and that's why you can't do good to others on your own accord and in your own strength uh, praise God that's why he may, watch this so you don't absolve and, and get yourself in, tr in trouble with God he says in your weakness oh my God his strength is made perfect so when you can't find a way to be good, God, I need you to help me. He's a very present help. Hmm. All right, all right. His goodness doesn't waver. He isn't benevolent, catch this, sometimes and less so at other times. Somebody say he's constant. Oh God, he is constant, which is to say how you meet him today is how he's going to be tomorrow. My God, my God, huh? he never changes. Somebody say he never changes. I don't know how about you, but this is some stuff. Um, uh, I, I've, I've been a several places in the world, but particularly when I travel around the U.S. Or, or anywhere in between states and we embark upon a store like, say, Walmart or if you're even in Florida, for the most part, Publix, I get troubled when I walk into Publix and the orientation is off. Like, I expect to walk in and fruits are to the right. Y'all with me? And, and you know where the bakery is and you, you know, you, but when you walk in and you're like, where the pharmacy? It's over in the back in the corner? Listen, I need to use the bathroom right now. It used to be right here. Well, now, I, oh God, Jesus. <laughs> but to know that he's a God that is so reliable, so accountable, so constant, so consistent, so faithful, he never changes. That means, watch this, you can call him at any time and he doesn't wake up with an attitude. Now, you call me at the wrong time. You might not get the best version of me, especially if I'm hungry. <laughs> but God, no matter what we face, and watch this, even when we come up short, he's a faithful father, Lord. He's never seeking to do us harm, but always good, never wavering, never fluctuating, never inconsistent. He's constant. You press the gas, you press the, you press the pedal rather, and, 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 and your speed modulates. God moves at the same pace because he's not moved. How do you know he moves at the same pace? Because it's not your will, but his will be done. Now watch this. There was, there was, watch this. Mary and Martha who, uh, praise God, was faced with their brother dying. And Jesus came to know before he died and said, and delayed as a result. So, and then said, it's because it was good for you. <laughs> so he just kept on doing like he had not heard what was happening. He is constant. The dilemma we face is that there are aspects of our life that aren't good. Yet these events do not negate God's goodness. Every blessing we have comes from the Father who never changes. Let me give you a scripture, another scripture. We've got a few. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above. Luke 6 35 says, For he himself is kind. Watch this, so you don't get it twisted and think in part it's only about the saved. For he himself is kind even to the ungrateful. That's how constant God is and consistent he is, that even to the ungrateful and the evil alike. Oh God, so how is it that they getting blessed and they ain't doing what God said? Because God said, watch this, another scripture, I reign on the just. All right, all right. 
Go to Matthew 5.45. Matthew 5.45. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous, the just, and the unjust, the unrighteous. He is constant. Ooh. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh God, what a mighty God. When we say such words, we serve. That he is constant. Oh God. So in other words, watch this. If this service be different from last week, don't think God was there last week more than he is. Because he's constant. God's goodness, number two, number next on the five things that you need to know. First one was God is constant. Make a note of the second. God's goodness is not always pleasant. Ooh. I'm going to tiptoe around this one real easy because somebody going to get offended and think in part, well, it, if, it, if it's good to the last drop, that means that, that it ought to, ought to taste a certain way. Oh, God. Um, uh, watch this. Coffee is good for some. Any coffee drinkers in here? All right, I'm just about to offend you. Anyway, praise God. I just want to make sure I know who, who you were. <laughs> um, some people love coffee, but to other people it's bitter. Some people love tea, but to other people it's light. Too light. Um, my point is this. That it's a matter of your perspective and to some degree your experience. Because the more experience you have with God, the more you realize that God through your experience is drawing you closer to him. But when it is that you're going through it, you feel like he's pushing or better yet removing himself. But, 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 watch this. but it is working. I, I can't go, oh God. Somehow God, through that experience, is working all things out together for good. God isn't good. Watch this. You got it. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He told me to tell you this, and I've got to make sure I say it the way he gave it to me. He said, God isn't good because he does good things for us. Oh, y'all, watch this. He isn't good just because he does good things for us. God also isn't good because of something in us. If I do good, then I get good. It has nothing to do with how good you are. Watch this. If it was predicated on how good you were, then none of us would be saved. Because the Bible says, for while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. In other words, while your hands were still dirty, while you were still trying to figure it out, God died for you. Both God and his choices, however, you need notice, remain good, even when they may not feel or look particularly good for you. God, help me to know, help me to understand why I'm going through. Help me to see the good in what I'm experiencing. God doesn't have to respond to at all, nor every time, nor even the same way every time. Y'all, y'all, you got to get this. Again, I'll say it again. He doesn't have to respond, respond at all. <laughs> And he'll still be good. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Watch this. You, I mean, we were all children once upon a time. And we would ask our parents for something. And they act like they didn't hear us. That don't change their goodness. Because you didn't get the Christmas gift you wanted. The birthday gift you wanted. The recognition you wanted. Don't predicate his goodness on his action towards you solely based upon the fact that he didn't give you what you wanted when you wanted it, how you wanted it. Watch this. Nor every time, nor even the same way every time. 
Well, I came to him this way last week, and he came to me this way, and I expect him to show up that way next week. That don't mean, watch this, he's inconsistent. That don't mean he's inconsistent because your way is not his way. Your time is not his time. To everything, there's a time and a season. He's committed to his word, not to your pattern, nor to your perspective. Oh, y'all got to see this. He's committed to his word. All right, all right, all right. Okay, all right, we got to get somewhere. Everyone or everything he does or does not do is out of his own sovereignty, his grace, and his love, and his goodness. God's goodness, I say it again, is not always pleasant. Somebody say it ain't always pleasant. Ain't always pleasant. I'm reminded of the story of Joseph, who in part was chosen by God. Yes, he was favored by his father, but yet, I mean, being anointed and chosen and favored and all of that, praise God, he went, he was hated on by his brothers. And the Bible says his brothers contrived and sought to get rid of him. And in getting rid of him, they put him in a pit. And then here comes others along the way, found him, and then put him in, watch this, what, what was the next step? From the prison, to what? Prison, right? And he went from prison, and then, watch this, from the prison to the palace, and then found haters in the palace, part of his, <laughs> praise God. So no matter where he was, he still encountered the same <laughs> Watch this. But still favor, still love, still anointed. Praise God. Still a dreamer. What was, what was crazy about it is, it, uh, as far as we know, he had only one dream up until this point. And we identified him as a dreamer. And then all of a sudden now he goes through this experience of being in the palace and then being accused in the palace. He then ends up back in prison. And you would think that God would have been Watch this, giving up on him, but because God is constant. <laughs> and because your gifts were given without repentance, in other words, you can be in the club and your gift still works. And you're wondering, how in the world is God still using me even though I'm on the street? How in the world is God still using me even though I'm in bankruptcy and I'm in, in a divorce? Because it's not predicated. God is not predicated to, to move according to your environment and your circumstance. He's constant, faithful to the word over your life. And so watch this, watch this. He's now in this situation in prison. And then, watch this, others have a dream and they bring the dream to him and he interprets the dream. Praise God. And just when he thought he was forgotten, I'm going the long route. Just when he thought he was forgotten, here comes an opportunity to, 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 to inform the king as to why the meaning of that dream. And watch this, he goes from there to then being put in authority. And here comes the very brothers, the very ones whom by reason of now facing a famine, praise God, they now needed his help, and he, in turn, was the one positioned to help them. Notice his words now. Joseph says this in Genesis 50, verse 20. He says these words. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. <laughs> he, oh God, y'all missed it. Somebody missed their place to shout. You don't even realize that the process, oh God, God will allow you to go through the process and yes, the pain and yes, the persecution, but it was meant, what the devil meant for evil. God has a way, like Joseph says, but God intended it for For good. Somebody shout, nothing will be wasted. It don't matter what you went through. It don't matter how hard it's been. Nothing you went through will be, oh God, out of reach of God. Nothing will be wasted. Every hurt God will make good. He is good to the last. You know what Joseph said? Well, he, he didn't just stop there. Note his next words. He says, he brought me to this position 
so that I can save the lives of many people. God will allow you to go through some stuff just so you can turn around and grab somebody by the hand and say, baby, I went through it. And because I went through it, so can you. Somebody say he's constant. Eh, his goodness is not always pleasant. Number three, watch this, make a note of this. God's goodness. I'm so excited when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Praise God, I was a wretch undone. Wasn't what anything saving, but God was consistent. God's goodness is not equal. Number three is... His goodness is not equal. God, y'all with me? God, somebody say God. God. Goodness, goodness is not equal. God is good to all. Make a note of this. This is not going to be on screen. God's goodness, God is good to all in some ways. But he's good to some in all ways. I'll say it again. God is good to all in some ways. But he's good to some in all ways. Matthew 5, 45 says, He gives his sunlight to both evil and good. And he sends rain. Y'all, watch this. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. Is, is that what your Bible says? I'm just happen to be reading the New Living Translation, so maybe there's another version that has a different meaning. But, but, but he, the Bible says something key. He sends rain. See, d- depending on where you are, rain is either a blessing or a burden. I was talking to my dad just this week. And I said, how you doing, Dad? How you doing, Pops? He was like, I'm good, man. I'm just happy. I was like, what you happy about? Because it's raining. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't like being out here. It's raining. I'm just, I got to be on the road. He don't drive, so he don't have nothing to worry about. <laughs> I drive, and every time it rain, I be seeing some crazy stuff happen on the road. <laughs> and so to me, it don't look so much like, and he's a gardener, so he loves green grass. I'm trying to murder my grass every chance I get. Without getting in trouble with the HOA. Anyway, praise God. <laughs> to him, it's a blessing. So there are times in our lives where what we go through can look like a burden. Ah, but it's a matter of our perspective. Or could it be that of a blessing? Watch this. I'm going to tie the two principles up uh, that we just learned about the, last, the part here where God is not equal. Watch this. And, and uh, the first, or the second rather, where he, watch this, God's goodness is not always pleasant. How many of you have ever been disciplined? Yo, uh, uh, the rest of you, you had time out? How many of you survived? Survived. Let me just... Spare the rod. Ah, Jesus. Any survivors in this room? You, you just knew. Jesus. You were in trouble. Oh, my God. You just pray and they get caught up at work. You just pray that they come home with amnesia. You just pray there will be something better than the situation that they'll get caught up in that. My dad had forget-me-not memory. It don't matter how good stuff was. He come home with an increase and a paycheck and all of that. And then at, by the time we think it's all good, he'd be like, oh, by the way, we needed to talk. <laughs> there was no talking back then. It really meant he needed to talk. <laughs> but but that, 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 that discipline at the moment didn't feel good. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It didn't feel good. Oh, my God. But we had to endure it, didn't we? Watch this. It didn't feel pleasant. It didn't feel like he loved us. 
When God begins to chasten us, it don't feel like he loves us. <laughs> God. But, but, but watch this. And, and, and I go even to the third point again that we said is, is goodness is not equal. Sometimes we feel like we're getting more than we deserve. You know what the rain symbolizes? First of all, is it, the rain symbolizes, what it, what it symbolizes is really subjective. Because, again, remember I said before, it can be a blessing to some, but a burden to others. So it is, in fact, subjective. But you need know that God is good to some in all ways as well. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, he says this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing. In the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. So there is a particular extent of a blessing that comes to the believer as a result of their relationship with God. So he blesses you irregardless of what you go through. And that's why you can't just look solely on what you're going through. Oh, praise God. But you got to realize that after the rain comes the sun. After the tears, weeping may enjoy for a night, but watch this. After the tears comes joy in the morning. You've got to realize God has more in store for you than you know. Oh God, why I got to go through this situation? Oh God, why I got to go through this wilderness? Why I got to go through waiting? For they that wait upon the Lord. I can't have you renewing your strength while you're working. Because you'll work, oh God, yourself out. So I got to rest. I got to put you in a place where you can't do as much as you want to do. Oh God. So, so that you can be renewed, hey God. And that you can come up in a new way. And that you can grow in a new strength. Ah, I'm trying to work some stuff out of you. So I got to let you go through this. Hey, I got to get you to go through this, Moses. Uh, I got to get you to go through this. Uh, of being, watch this. Being misidentified. Uh, being misinterpreted. Uh, I, I got to get you to go through this. Uh, and yes, you did some harm. You were a murderer. Yes, uh, you killed and then you fled. Uh, so now you were on the run. Uh, praise God. But in the wilderness experience, I encountered you because I'm constant. Uh, I didn't just show up when you were put in the water in a basket uh, to be found and rescued then uh, but I was constant even when you were on the run uh, how many of you had God met while you were on the run uh, praise God when you think you were out of God's will God said I found you and the place you stand the place you are now is holy you didn't have to come to church for me to find you I'm, mm, I redirected you and I found you on the run now the place you stand is holy ground. Take off your feet, your shoes, and I got a personal word for you. And in that person of him speaking to Moses concerning what it is that, watch this, that he was commissioned to do, he started dealing with Moses, and Moses started interacting with him, and he began to confess to him and convey to him his inadequacies and his handicaps and his struggles and why he did not feel qualified. And God, irregardless of, watch this, how he felt about him was still constant in his goodness towards him. Huh? And said, no, I called you. I know you don't feel like it, but I called you. I know you don't want to do it but I called you then took him back to the place he ran from to minister and liberate those that were in that same place think it not strange that what which God is doing in this hour for you you're going to have to go back to somebody and tell them, listen, I was where you are, stuck as you were, and God has given me a word. And listen, I don't even have to give you a word. Just watch me. Because I'm free. Just watch me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God's goodness is not equal, but watch this, fourth principle in point. God's goodness is not based on him. Watch this, I'm sorry. God's goodness is based on him and not us. Somebody say, it's not about us. It ain't about us. 
God sets, let me see how much time I have. Good. All right. God sets and is the standard. I'll say it again. God sets and is the standard for what good is and what it's not. Oh, how do I know the difference? Because he sets the standard and he is the standard for what good is and what it's not. It doesn't matter how something looks or how good it makes you feel. If it's not from God, it ain't good. The world will offer you substitutes and it might make you feel like it's good. But everything I know, and I've lived long enough to know everything that feel good Ain't God. Whew. Everything that feels good ain't God. You can have certain addictions that make you feel good for a moment. The thing about it is this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God's goodness is so constant. You're not, when you're really connected to God, and I say really connected, really, and there are times where we can, you know, disconnect because we're so busy body and we're so about. And, and truth be told, that's why we got to maintain and work our salvation. So there's no judgment here. But, but, but God's goodness is so good and so constant. And because it's so good and so constant, it's become reliable. You can plug in at any time and get what you used to get, how you got it. And not be delayed in getting it. Well, watch this. Watch, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying this. But I, I'm, I'm being careful. I'm being careful because I got to break it down past the merit. Because, because uh, um, there, there, there's something here. There's something here. Um, the, the outlet on this stage is, is filled with power. Even if I'm not connected to it. I'm walking on power. I may not realize how much power... Is under my feet because I'm not connected. Oh God, you can even be connected and still not know how much power you're connected to. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not until you need the power <laughs> and then you start pulling from the power that you regard how much power there really is uh, in the girl in the ground that's how it is sometimes with God you can walk with God and almost negate undermine remember I said what you fail to acknowledge you will inevitably undermine uh, you can walk with God and almost forget that he is powerful Oh my God, that his goodness and mercy never fails and is never inconsistent, oh God, but always constant. That you fail to connect to the power, and yes, you might connect to the power like coming to church. Yes, you might connect to the power like getting in position. But you can certainly misrepresent or miss the blessings of God if you don't open up yourself and pull from the power, pull from the cistern, pull from the tower, pull from God what you need from God. That's why when you come to church, it can't be about people. It can't be about situations. You've got to know that God is in the room and whatever you need, God can provide. Somebody shout, he can provide. All you got to do is tap in. Somebody slap your neighbor and say, tap in, tap in, tap in. Whatever you need, he can provide. Somebody shout one more time, he can provide. This is what scripture says. Sit down, y'all, making me nervous. Luke 18, 10 says, only God is truly good. <sighs> And the same is true when the psalmist said in Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good till the last drop. I promise you, some of y'all don't eat like me. When I eat something I really like, oh God. Mm. I, I get upset when I'm in the wrong place. You ever eat something so good that you're in a restaurant 
And because you don't want to misrepresent your culture, you be like, no, nah, I'll just take this home. I'm going to take this home. Oh, when I get home, I'm going to damage this thing. Oh, Jesus. My wife, I, I'm going to embarrass you all. Praise God. I, it ain't good. It's so good. I'm get, it's so good. Jesus. It's so good. It's so good. When, when I come into the presence of the Lord, he's so good that I want everything. I'm sorry, I know you're hungry too, but when I'm coming to the Lord, in the presence of the Lord and I'm needing something, I don't have time to check how hungry you are. When I'm hungry, whatever, whatever meal time, I'm here, ready, ready, ready. We ain't prayed yet, I'm ready. Pray, pray, pray. He's so good. <laughs> I'm drinking the tea and I want the sugar at the base. Oh, it's so good. I ain't never done coke, but I heard, or, or, or these drugs, but I heard that people who are strung on it, they'll get real indignant if you spill their crack. I get real mad if I come to church and I miss what God has for me when he's promised me and everything he's promised me is yay and amen. I'd be so upset if I let the devil rob me of the things that God has promised me because I was so distracted, because I was so upset and I was so bothered and I was so encumbered. God wants to relieve you of such. Here's what you got to know about this text. God's goodness is not based upon your emotional standard. In other words, it ain't based on how you feel today. Hey, hey, hey God, it's good, good. I feel real wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus. Oh God, it's not based upon your emotional state. God, I am so upset. Oh God, I got caught up. Oh God, I forgot. Oh God, I'm feeling like I'm going crazy. And his goodness is constant. God, I don't think I can bear it. God, I don't think I can handle it. God, I don't think I'm ready for it. Almost like he's standing there with an attitude. Okay. Oh, no, I've been here. She's been like this since she was five years old. The angels be like, God, you're so patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't hold against her what she has done all her life. He doesn't move based upon our emotional or even our logical standard. Because you would think... That if he loved Lazarus, as the Bible said, he loved him, that he will come immediately to him. But it's not based upon your logical standard. I pray today and I expect the harvest tomorrow. I fasted right. Mm, I'm telling you, he's not basing. What did he say to us? Do it without ceasing. Oh God, what did he say? Cast all your cares. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not to... How you think about it when you think it should happen. You know what God is, watch this. So you're not careful to forget. Uh, there are some prayers you've prayed that has not been answered yet. Praise God. The truth of the matter is some of us are walking in blessings now that were not based upon your prayers yesterday. But it was based upon, watch this, uh, maybe what you prayed 10 years ago. Perhaps not even your prayers. Because the prayers of the righteous uh, availeth much. Somebody was praying for you when you couldn't even pray for yourself. That's why you won't get it if you try to work it out in your logical mind. Because in your logical mind, faith does not exist. Uh, but faith is the, what's this, the substance of things uh, hoped for. The things that you cannot see. Hey, my God. It takes faith to walk out this thing. And without faith, it's impossible. 
so the next time you're going through something you can say all things are working together for my good I may not know I cannot tell but I know God is and he will and he shall somehow some way he'll bring me out of this give somebody a high five and tell him he'll bring you out he'll bring you out He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. How do I know he'll bring you out? Because the Bible said that Moses, who brought them out of Egypt, was faced with a logical situation. The Red Sea before them. And in that place of dealing with that, he was faced with the people who I believe were his greatest obstacle because they did not have the faith to believe that the same God that brought them out of Egypt was able to bring them across the Red Sea. Hey, let me pause and put a pin. The same God that delivered you 10 years ago is the same God that can deliver you right now. The same God that propped you up, set you up, built you up back then is the same God that can do it right now. Watch this. And there at the Red Sea, <laughs> see, the way we pray is not how God, remember I said he does not operate according to our standard, our logic. There are many prayers I prayed and God has seldom ever answered my prayers the way I asked him to answer them. God just take them out of the picture. All right, you, you, you add one more, Jesus, God. All right, maybe I'm praying the wrong way. God, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, okay, all right, Lord, all right, Lord, all right, Lord. This fire is hot. Turn it up. Did not the Bible say that about the children of Israel? That while it is that they were walking through, that, that, watch this, that the king turned up the fire so it would be hotter. You praying to get out and God is turning it, turn it up, turn, turn up. But I'm so glad he was a God that which is, didn't just watch us go through, but he came down into and walked with us, dwelt among men. He said to Moses, he said, listen, you're at this Red Sea experience so that you understand how I move. What's in your hand? See, I don't, it's not that I don't work miracle signs and wonders, but I want you to realize that what you need, you already have. You don't see that you have it. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send, send the disciples out because they're hungry. The people are hungry, God. All right, go find who has what to, for them to eat. And then he comes back. Oh, you're telling me all the 5,000 people. Fishes and loaves. I can survey this church right now and to your embarrassment, ask anybody to open up their wallet right about now and somebody got some mint, somebody got some pack of gum, somebody got some crackers. <laughs> and this ain't 5,000 people. You mean to tell me they surveyed 5,000 people and all they came back was with fishes and loaves? Yeah, because what, you, what we think we, oh God, thank you Holy Spirit. The Lord told me to tell you, kingdom is not without void. Whatever we need is already present. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? See, in your hand, you don't even realize it's your blessing. Because this is what we do when we're under pressure. I don't want to do this no more. And it turns into a serpent. And so you look back and you're scared about taking it up. But in your hand, you had authority. In your hand, you had, child. oh God, you had the command. You had the, oh God, you had the grace. But as long as you threw it down, it looked like a burden. And the same thing he threw down 
I'm going in the text. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. But uh, the, the same thing he threw down when he picked it up and was to cross the Red Sea. He said, what's in your hand? So you mean to tell me the burden can become your blessing? Huh. Some of y'all wouldn't pray the way you prayed if it wasn't for your burden. Some of you all wouldn't fast the way you fast if it wasn't for your burden. You wouldn't even serve God the way you serve God if had it not been for your burden. You wouldn't even challenge God or take him to his word if it wasn't for his burden. But God, but his burden is easy and his, his light. Can I give you the last one? We're going to go home. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to give you the last one. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. God's goodness blesses us through everything. Somebody say through everything. Through everything. Romans 8, 28. This is my last text. I'm going to give you the rest on wherever. <laughs> the, the, I got so I got the, the screen team know I got like half my notes ain't even or anywhere. Praise the Lord. This is the last point. Romans eight twenty eight. Romans eight twenty eight. And we know that God causes causes sets up situations, puts things in place and in perspective so that it works together for your benefit. Causes everything to work. Even the thing that the enemy does and has the reign to do and, and charge to do. Have you tried my servant Job? Praise God. He will even permit him to do, but he, but he allows and he causes everything to work together, the Bible says. To work together for what? To work together for what? Come on, say it with me. To work together for what? For what? For what? He causes everything to work together for my good. To work together for my good. You see, the phrase, so you know, watch this, thank you, Holy Spirit. The phrase work together speaks to synergism. Let me define what synergy is, which is the root word to the word synergism. Synergism is the working together, catch this, the working together of elements to produce an effect greater than the complete, what, I'm sorry, to, 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 to produce an effect greater than or completely different from the elements if acting separately. I got to get it again. Oh, this is going so. Synergism is the working together of elements to produce an effect greater than or completely different from the elements if acting separately. There is a thing in the natural called sodium chloride, NaCl. Sodium by itself, if ingested, makes you sick. Chloride by itself can make you sick and in fact, Overindulging in any one of these can cause you to even die. But together, it creates salt. <laughs> the Bible tells me that we are the salt. Y'all, <laughs> y'all. When I came into Christ, I became the salt of the earth. If you take me without Christ, I am dangerous to you. <laughs> Too much of O'Neill will kill you. <laughs> and if I deny my humanity and walk with God, I might push you out of God because I'm too much like him to want anything else other than him. But God will have my humanity conjoined with his super... Work in tandem with his spirit uh, so that I can work in his will while being careful to not deny my humanity so I can always remain relatable. So in other words, uh, that 
he'll use what we experience in the natural and collaborate it with the spiritual so that it works together for good. Sometimes our natural experiences don't seem like they're aligned with our spiritual experiences, but it's ultimately what God, remember I said the benefit before to the believer is that there is a supernatural blessing uh, that God has already provided you. And so that's why you got to know uh, that regardless of what your natural experiences dictate, uh, your spiritual experiences will always trump uh, your natural experiences. That's why you've got to go through, praise God. And the Bible says when you go through, watch this, this is how you go through. Whatsoever you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose in heaven, it shall be loosed on earth. Uh, how do I know that there is a difference? Uh, because, watch this, uh, what I will do in the flesh uh, may not, oh God, will not work out to my benefit. But what I do in the spirit, uh, as long as it's in the spirit of God, it will always work in tandem with God. Because God works in tandem with his word. And his word never changes. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Whatever is your this too, it shall pass. It shall pass. Stand to your feet all over this room. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. I needed God. Working in tandem with O'Neill. Because by myself, I'm miserable. You don't know. Some, some people knew me back when, but... <laughs> but some people met me now, and you need to know, had it not been for the Lord, who was on. Anybody here a witness? If you knew me back when, Oh God, how messed up I was, intolerable I was, insensitive I was, broken I was, hungry I was, oh God, angry I was, bitter I was, unforgiving I was, oh God, struggling I was, broken I was, if you knew how I was back then. But if it had not been for the Lord, and his goodness. Y'all don't understand. I wanted to tell you all this. And I almost made it a title to my message. And it was going to be a title, I'm being followed. The Bible says, his goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Even when I didn't know somebody was following me. I don't know if you've ever gotten so far where you didn't realize that God was on your heels. That God was still in the work. And you were running. And you were, you were trying to be careful not to go. You kept driving by this building. You kept seeing the sign. You kept hearing the call. You kept hearing his voice. You were being followed. His goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You woke up this morning and you knew God was watching over you. You should not have made it through the night. God was, I was telling Deacon last night how my wife and I woke up about 3.20 something this morning because our ring kept going off. You're hearing a sound. I'm going this, this tying into the conclusion of this word. We kept hearing the sound of, you know, ring has a distinct sound. Ring doorbell. So just in case we're losing anyone. We kept hearing it, and I just thought something was, because we got some plants that might have moved in front of the, and it wasn't that. She said, hon, um, I think somebody in our yard. It took me a little minute. Not a whole minute, but I was like, What? All right, I guess I got to get dressed. I got dressed. I have a peacemaker, so I went. (laughs) 
Church could have not happened today. Oh, Jesus. I, um, I went downstairs. She was like, please don't go outside. I ain't crazy. I went outside. But I don't know if they try to break in. So I went downstairs and I sat there for a little while. And I sat there for a little while. And I sat there for a little while. And then I started thinking about the weight of what was my assignment today. Because this was 3.20 in the morning. Typically I would wake up about 5, 6. Especially on Sundays when I just want to get in my office, get prayed up and get ready for coming out to service. Um, but while I'm sitting there, the Lord said, trust not in horses, nor in man. He that keepeth Israel does not slumber, nor sleep. I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to bed now. You got this. Because all my worry, the truth of the matter is, can I be truthful to you? I wasn't even thinking about, I wasn't really thinking about defending my home. I was just really thinking about, don't shoot yourself. Because in your anxiety, you become more in danger to yourself. <laughs> That's why I said the church, we could have probably not had church today. What you've been worried about of late, troubled about, bothered about. But I heard God say, No, I got this. I'm so good. Watch this. I'm so good. Don't give up because you had a taste. I'm good to the last. That's what that's the theme for Maxwell House, the coffee. I'm good to the last drop. Don't just settle with a taste. Don't just taste God and I, I'm going to try out this and try out that. I'm trying the church. I'm trying the people. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm so good that even when I connect you with people that sometimes you're good now and you kind of abrasive later, I'm working it out because a brother, a friend is born of adversity. A brother is born of adversity. I'm working it out. Sometimes we're going to rub. Sometimes, watch this, even the person to whom you can't agree is the first person assigned to you. You don't know who you're going to need in the jailhouse. Hey, God, if you're not standing, stand with me. I want to pray over you. And perhaps you want to make your way to this altar. Perhaps you have not, amen, given your life to the Lord. But today you so desire to. Our ministers are here to pray with you. We want to pray with you and for you. We don't want you to go home the same or feeling in part that you have to. Perhaps you're here today and you need a closer walk with the Lord. Perhaps you're here today and you realize that you've been going through, as it were, by yourself. I invite you to come to this altar. Oh God, oh taste and see that he is good. Can I ask you just close your eyes for a moment? Let's, let's consider this moment as being sacred. Let's consider this moment as a, an opportunity for somebody to make their way out of the aisle. Make it easy for them. No distractions. Can, you, can I suggest to you that God loves you so much so that he wanted you to be acquainted with his love and his goodness? Perhaps you're going and you're burdened and you're challenged and you're you're pressured it's been on your shoulder it's been a situation that has been holding you for a while now I want to invite you to come come out come on come on make it make it make it make it make it come on come on I'm saying this is important I'm saying this is important I'm saying this is important because let me tell you when it's on it's it, it gets heavy and sometimes we need other people to help us bear the weight of what we're going through so 
I'm going to ask you to be your brother's keeper right now. If you're not already standing here ready to minister with somebody, introduce yourself to the person next to you. Introduce yourself to the person next to you and ask them the question. Do you need help today? Ask, that's the question. Whether you're in the platform or you're in the pew, point to them. Ask them that question. Do you need help today? You see, the truth of the matter is you might not be able to help them, and maybe you are. But if they say yes, or you can sense there's a yes behind their response. Just ask them, can I pray for you and with you? I, I need us to take a moment because we're going to give thanks and we're going to celebrate and we're going to rejoice and we're going to contemplate on the goodness of God and we're going to remember the words spoken today but, but I do believe that this moment somebody needs to know that there is an angel on their road. Can you be that angel and minister to them? You might be strangers now and friends tomorrow. You might be that witness. Oh God, as we pray, as we pray, and as we pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now for all that you're doing in this room, for what you're doing by your children, for what you're doing for this family, for this loved one, for this, Lord Jesus, oh God, their homes and their relationships for their children and their spouse. I thank you for what you're doing on their place of employment. I thank you for what you're doing in their place of business, for what you're doing in their community, to their family home, to their neighborhood. I thank you right now for what you're doing. Lord Jesus, hey God, Lord, I know, God, that you are working things together for good and somehow, Lord Jesus, oh God, you are seeing them through, God. Let us not lose faith. Let us not lose hope. Let us not lose focus. Let us not lose sight. But draw us ever closer, closer than we've ever been before. Jesus, oh God, I pray that somehow in this moment, God, Lord, you'll reach them right where they are. You'll touch them right where they are. You'll minister to them right where they are. And that you will be their guide and that you will be their peace. And that you will be their help and that you will be their strength. We rejoice today, God, knowing that you are capable, that you are most able, God. Lord Jesus, oh God, we are triumphant. We are victorious. Oh God, Lord Jesus, oh God, you are <laughs> our keeper. You are our strength. You are. You are. Whatever we need, you are. Whatever we hope for, you are. Whatever we desire, you are. And Lord, our light, our light is not dim. Our light is not, mm, my God, is not quenched. It's not suffocated. Ah, it's not diminished in any way by virtue of our situation. But even the more, intensify our light so much so that men may come to know you through us. Lord Jesus, oh God, I thank you right now, God, for ministering, ministering, healing, delivering, setting free. Ah, thank you, God. Lord, you still heal your yesterday, today, and forevermore. You still bless your yesterday, today, and forevermore. You still keep your yesterday, today, and forevermore. You still cover yesterday, today, and forevermore. You still strengthen. You still guide. You still hope, hold. You are, you are everything we need and more. God, you are Elohim. You are Adonai. You are, you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. You are, you are, you are Eloi. Lord, God is, God is, God is whatever you need and more I am that I am saith God whatever you need and more whatever you need and more I am I am a friend I am a keeper I'm a strength I'm a guide I'm a hope I'm a peace whatever you need and more 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 do me a favor grab the hand of the person nearby you for a quick moment oh my God grab the hand of the person we gonna close this way praise God perhaps you are here today yeah, perhaps you're here today I want and you might felt alone I want you to know the hand that you're connected to hey God Lord Jesus is only a reminder in this natural realm uh, that God has, has your hand in his hand in the spirit realm right now and he's holding you up he's keeping you from falling he's keeping you from quitting he's keeping you from going under he is a keeper. He's a keeper. 
He's a keeper. How many of you know he's a keeper? Yes, he is. Father, Lord, I pray for the hand that I hold. Yeah. Lord, we lean on others. We lean into each other. May we find strength. Hey, may we find peace. May we find hope. Lord, I pray right now. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, we pray right now. We pray right now. We pray right now. Lord, I pray for Pastor Solomon in the, in the hospital room. I pray your healing upon her, her body. I pray you touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Minister to her. Oh God, minister to her well-being and oh God, into that circumstance. I pray for Teresa Gerard and her family and the loss they experienced just recently. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would strengthen and keep her. I pray for the Leavers. I pray for the Owens. I pray. I pray for those who have in every way, God. Uh, Lord, we pray, we pray, we pray. Be a strength. Be, 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 be. He abasha. You are God enough. You're God enough. You're God enough. You're complete enough. You're Oh God, I don't know about you, but I'm believing God for next level, newness, greatness, Godness in everything. There's so many things. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Hey. Oshataya. Rabandamasi. All right. Father, as we leave this place, never from your presence, go with us, before us, and behind us. May your love always be with us and be our portion. We thank you now and always. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. While we will continue praying here at this altar, you are certainly dismissed in the fear of the Lord. May God bless you. If you do not have a church home and desire to be a part of this house, this ministry, we do have a class coming up. Um, our, our orientation for you we want to invite you to be a part now make it known we're here amen we'd love to connect with you um i'll tour your wave real quickly stand proxy amen she'll meet you here god bless you all have a beautiful thanksgiving we love you we love you we love you god bless you happy thanksgiving to all amen god bless you all